Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. In this lecture, we are going to talk about the strengths of acids and bases. So we recall that acids are things that donate a hydrogen ion and bases are things that accept a hydrogen ion. So let's go ahead and get started here. And what we see is that we can talk about strengths of acids and bases and we can consider them to be either weak or strong. And when we consider it weak or strong, it depends on how ionized they are in water. So with a weak acid or base, there will be very little ionization. With a strong acid or base, it'll be essentially complete ionization. So some examples here, there are some strong acid li acids listed here, such as hydrochloric acid, and some strong bases, uh, such as things like sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. So remember, of course, that a base is always going to have the OH, the hydroxide, and the uh, acid is always going to have the hydrogen. So that when remember when we combine an acid and a base, you'll get an H plus an OH, which will eventually form water. Now we can also look at this in terms of percent ionization, and we can calculate the percent ionization of a weak acid. Now why not a strong acid? Remember a strong acid is essentially 100% ionized. But a weak acid can be a different percentage. And we look at that by the concentration of the hydronium ion at equilibrium. And we divide that by the concentration, the molarity of the acid itself. So we can divide those two and we multiply that by 100 to convert it into a percentage. Now we can go ahead and do an example of this. So let's go ahead and look at one. And what we want to do is calculate the percent ionization of a 0.125 molar solution of nitrous acid. And it has a pH of 2.09. So remember what we have to find. First of all, we've got what we know. We know the pH and we know the molarity of the solution. However, we need to do a little more calculation here because we want to calculate the percent ionization. So essentially, we know the molarity of the solution. That's what's going to go down here. But we need to find the concentration of the hydronium ion at equilibrium. And we can do that from the pH as we've done before. So we can say then that the concentration of H3O plus is just 10 to the minus 2.09. Remember, that's where the pH comes from. And the concentration is 10 to the minus of the pH. If you put that in the calculator, you would find that that gives a molarity of 0 0.0081. So now we know the molarity of the or sorry, we know the concentration of the hydronium ion. And we can place that in our equation. And that goes in the top. Again, we already had the 0.125. That's what goes down here for the molarity of the solution. And we divide those two, multiply by 100. And we find a 6.5% for the percent ionization. So 6.5% of the of, of the acid has been uh, is what has been ionized there. So unlike a strong acid where that would be 100%, it's just a tiny fraction of a percent in a weak acid. Now when we look at acids and bases, we can consider when we consider what we look at, we look at the acid compounds looking at hydrogen with some of the non metals. And here we're looking towards the very right portion of the periodic table. And the acidity, the strength increases as you move to the right. And as you move down on the periodic table. So something like CH4 methane is not an acid or a base. It's neither one. Then you have a very weak base here and then you will have a neutral and then you will have a weak acid as you move into fluorine. On the next row again you have a very you have not neither you have a very weak base a weak acid and a strong acid. So as you go to the right the acid strength increases and as you go down the periodic table the acid strength increases. So anything you work down towards that lower 
Uh, that lower right hand side now remembering of course that we have the noble gases there that would not be involved in this but as you work your way down and to the right you will get stronger acids as you work up and to the left you will get stronger bases so it gives you a rough idea of what to expect when you're looking at something in the periodic table are you getting something that is a stronger acid or a stronger base so let's go ahead and finish up here with our summary. And what we've looked at this time is we talked about the strength of an acid or base, and it depends on the level to which it is ionized in water. A strong acid would be ionized at 100%. A weak acid could be much less than that. And we saw an ionization of about 6% in our example that we worked out. The percent ionization tells tells you about the amount of weak acid that has been ionized. So how much of it has been ionized. And we looked at the binary acids where the strength increased downward and to the right in the periodic table. So that concludes this lecture on strengths of acids and bases. We'll be back again next time for another topic in physical science. So until then, have a great day everyone. And I will see you in class.